Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Poker for Thursday, the 5th of May. Today in the show, Steam reviewed, taking an orchestra to the knee, and games aging like a fine wine. All right, here's what's been making headlines. And first up, Valve has made some tweaks to Steam's user review system. The changes are designed to place more of an emphasis on recent impressions of a game. Any review submitted within the last 30 days will contribute to a game's recent reviews, creating a strong distinction between what the store is calling overall and recent reviews is particularly helpful for early access developers whose games can drastically change month by month. Although I'm sure the small team behind Batman Arkham Knight are loving it too. Other tweaks to the system will allow people to view reviews in multiple languages and give them the ability to disclose whether or not they received a copy of the game for free. 2D Sandbox game Terraria has been playable on nearly every device under the sun. Your Xboxes, your Playstations, your 3DSs and your Vitas, your smartphones, probably even this Disney Aladdin tie-in device from the 90s. The exception has been the Wii U, but that's about to change. The Call of Duty series may have abandoned Nintendo's hardware years ago, but Terraria refuses to give up. Initially released on PC in 2011, Terraria's Wii U edition finally has a release date of June 24th this year. The port will include support for the Wii U gamepad, which I can imagine would be quite useful for crafting phallic towers across your pixely plane of existence. Bethesda has dropped the trailer for their final announced Fallout 4 DLC, Far Harbor. The content add-on will take players on one of Detective Valentine's cases to infiltrate a secret colony of synths. The studio is touting this will be the largest landmass add-on Bethesda Game Studios has created for any of its games. And with the rest of the world catching up on International Star Wars Day overnight, there were quite a few themed announcements and reveals. The biggest was that Titanfall developer Respawn Entertainment will be making a Star Wars game for EA. While they haven't said much at this point, they have confirmed the game will be a third-person action adventure. Helming the project is Stig Asmussen, who has had a promising history in the third-person action genre as he was the game director of God of War 3 before joining Respawn. Also in a galaxy far, far away, Traveler's Tales dropped a new trailer for LEGO The Force Awakens, which showed off some of the game's exclusive story content, which takes place before the events in the film, and teases new dialogue from some of the film's cast. Repairs completed, sir. Just need to load fuel and ammo. Uh, and Wookiee cookies for chewing. And Microsoft announced that The Force Unleashed and its sequel are the latest 360 games to become backwards compatible with the Xbox One. There's also sales on Star Wars games on pretty much every digital store if you're interested in checking out some old, classic, and not-so-classic Star Wars titles. Now it's time for Thing of the Day! Thing of the Day! Fans of both Skyrim and Swedish symphony orchestras rejoice as there's a wonderful cover of The Dragonborn Comes on YouTube. Listen to those sweet, sweet strings. Thing of the day. The most disturbing thing about that is not the face mash, it's the crying baby in the background. Sir, look after your baby. I'm joined now by Gog. Hi. For our talk through, my baby. Uh, and today's topic comes in from Game and Wongas. Which I, I don't know. Uh, uh, but Game and Wongas says, talk through topic, do games age? Guys! Why is it that certain games become visibly dated while others age gracefully and continue to engage for years after release? Which part of games are most susceptible to aging? How has time altered your opinion of your favorite games, if at all? In short, are games anything at all like wine? Mmm. Mmm. Big topic. It's a huge one. There's a lot mm. of things here. So I, I, I feel like we should break it down into sections. Mm -hmm. At the top, yeah. I guess I would say that I would put, there are whole console generations, I would say, that age badly. Sure. So yeah. I would say something like the PlayStation 2. Yep. Uh, possibly even the PlayStation 1. Xbox. The Xbox. Yeah. These being generations which didn't necessarily create a lot of the genres of games. Mm. They were iterative, mm. and they were also trying to push 3D graphics and stuff, yeah. so they age I would say something like the SNES has aged quite well. Typically, quite 2D games always hold up fairly well. I was I was thinking about this a couple of days ago. That if I found one in a garage, mm. like in a garage sale or something, with sort of 20 games, I would buy it because I would go, 
all of those games probably hold up in some way. Mm. And I think there's a heap of reasons why they hold up, but mm. broadly speaking, we could break it down to three. Uh, the first of which being graphics. Yep. So why do you think that SNES games hold up better now than, than 3D stuff? Those were more about the art style, I think, than trying to replicate realistic 3D graphics. You, yeah. know, you saw a lot of something like the original Resident Evil on PlayStation, which just looks terrible. It looks so awful. So it's bad. so muddy and fuzzy. Yeah, and everyone's like, you can see, like, everyone's just like two polygons per leg. Like, yeah. It's really bad. That doesn't hold up well, but you look at Super Mario World, it's just a beautiful kind of animation style yeah. and, and art style that that is ageless. Like, that'll never age. Uh, one of my favorite games of all time is Alex Kidd. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alex Kidd, I still look at and go, it still looks beautiful because I think that. Uh, art style, you're actually just looking at art. You're mm. just looking mm. at a piece of art. And art art tends to not really age because yeah. it's it's a reflection of its time uh, and it's still trying to tell you something. So I look at those games and I think they're beautiful. Also, 2D, we still see 2D in a lot of other mediums. Yep. So we see comics and, and, and cartoons and that sort of thing. So I think our brain still sees 2D as a very viable yeah. way of telling a story or... or you know, putting across a medium. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, modern games these days are trying to emulate a lot of that old school look, sort of beautiful 8-bit games today. Yeah. We're like, that looks great, and that kind of art style we're still trying to emulate and, and do because it looks fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. John said something interesting earlier, which was he feels like when he plays, uh, when he thinks of old 3D games, mm. He feels like his brain, when he thinks about them now, is filling in mm. a lot of the storytelling and detail, going like, I'm, I'm putting on top of it what I imagine it to be now. Sure. As opposed to, yeah, when you think about siphon filter or something, mm. and you go, yeah, actually it was two shapes as legs. Yeah. Weirdly thin knees. Why did that? Why was it hips that went down into like no knees and then Just back into calves? Triangles for shins. Very and, strange. Yeah. Uh, so then the second one, is, the second thing that I think can age it is storytelling in mm -hmm. games. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like that's taken quite a long time to get to a point where we're not going to see quick aging. Yeah, it's a, it's a tougher one as well because I don't think we've seen good storytelling in games as a major focus for a while. Yeah. It's only really been in the recent generations I think stuff like Uncharted and Mass Effect have really pushed storytelling to the fore. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see if you know, give it two, three more generations from now, will people want to go back? Will the 3D graphics of those games just be too awful for people to want to look at? Even though Uncharted's beautiful today, yeah, absolutely. it still holds up. Even in, you know, with the remastered version, they might look at that and be like, nah, the story's not quite enough to drag me through. And in fact, cool. and yeah, like those stories are great. And I think it's a sophistication of storytelling. Mm. It's not just plot, because some older games had great plots, but they were told very simply. Yeah. Whereas you go, this, uh, you know, storytelling with Mass Effect or something has nuance. The like Red Dead Redemption being a game yeah, where you go, absolutely. oh, there's like emotional resonance and the, uh, you, you really are trying to tell a metaphor as well, not just sort of like a simple plot. Mm. It's interesting, the idea of going back to those games for the story, because not only do you need, will you need to be fighting against the graphics, they will be on 2D screens. Yeah. I feel like VR, if VR is heading where people want VR to head, mm. then all games up until VR yeah. will have a huge stumbling block of going back to them because you're not actually in the game. Yeah, that might be a problem, but I mean, so much VR stuff we've seen now is just you in a cinema playing VR on a big screen. <laughs> That's, very true. Anyway, so That's very true. As long as you're in VR in some way, people will probably be okay you're with You're just it. running an emulator playing old SNES games on a giant cinema screen yeah. in, in VR. VR. Yeah. yeah, and you just go oh, crossing all generations here. Mm. Uh, the other thing with storytelling, I guess, that, uh, that ages for me is when I have expectations of how stories are told now. Mm. So, uh, I mean, something as simple as voice acting. Yeah. So, you now every game has voice acting, and if it doesn't have voice acting, then I go, oh, you've made a very deliberate choice to not do this, and generally it's because you're trying to emulate an older game. Sure. There's a new Game Freak Nintendo game, mm. uh, Pocket Card Jockey, I think it's called. It's right. like solitaire and horse racing combined. Yeah. I opened up the demo for that this morning and the character pops up and starts talking in a text bubble and mm. I go, oh yeah, all Nintendo games just speak to me with these text bubbles and it, in, that game feels dated to me and it's not even out yet, I've only played the demo. Yeah, uh, but I think that's, that's another thing that will hold up better than bad voice acting. Again, to take it back to that's Resident true. Evil, that's the fact true. that they had voice acting there doesn't make it hold up well today. What is it? What did yeah. Resident Evil do to you that's making you pick on it so it's, much? Uh, look, I like Resident Evil, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying it has not aged well. It has that, not. That was one that was good back then. Go play the original now and you'll probably agree 
it's it hasn't aged well. Yeah. Your I little, mean, you might want to argue with me. Feel free to. Your little vendetta <laughs> against Resident Evil. It's, it's, it was a good game for its time. Just well, tell me if it's aged with the third way that I think the game's mm. aged, which probably is the most important, which is gameplay. Yep. Has it? <laughs> I think it's it's got that kind of shopping cart. Control. He hates it. He hates it. <laughs> No, I don't think it's aged particularly well. Yeah. I think that third person genre specifically has yeah. come so far that it would be hard to go back to a game like that. I mean, they've done a few remasters for it and they've fixed it and it's you know much more playable in the modern take on it. Yeah. But if you went and played the original now, you would probably be like, what's going on? Why is my character spinning in circles? Absolutely. But uh, it's because my mum's in control of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that oftentimes game, like games like Mario mm. stick around yeah. because not only is the gameplay great, but the gameplay is still being used in pretty much every single game in that genre that's being made today. Yeah. So you look at Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori is taking huge amounts of reference from Mario and, mm. and Super Metroid and that sort of thing. Yeah. And that by those elements of gameplay still being used, I think it probably keeps the old stuff current. Yeah, that's, that's probably a fair point. In, in a way that I feel like I played the um, the Gears of War multiplayer beta mm. last week or the week before, and games currently aren't doing that giant, chunky, heavy, hard-to-control character, yeah. roadie run style thing. And it's interesting as well, because that's only a one-generation old mechanic. It's it, yeah, yeah, and like, the last Gears of War game came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, and, and you go... I think, but I think even by then, it, that was feeling a little bit... It was a little like... Like, we've been here, done that, they're not really pushing anything new. Yeah. It's still fun, it still holds up, but it does. it is starting to feel dated already. Which yeah. is, I feel like you know. Gears of War feels the same way as I do when I look at Cliff Blazinski. <laughs> and I actually go, really? We're still going with, like, that sort of haircut and two bro still, attitude? Still doing that? Yeah, well, that's, that's yeah. what we're sticking with. It's making money for him, I guess. Um, How many Lambos has he got now? Oh, he's got so <laughs> many Lamborghinis. He's got smaller Lamborghinis that he puts in the passenger seat of his bigger Lamborghinis. Uh, the other thing that, uh, in terms of mm. gameplay, that would age games is limitations of hardware. Yeah. Which I feel like sometimes can work for you and push you to be creative. Yeah. But uh, I think about games that were on rails, uh, and that you go, those games were on rails back then because this is how we can make this game so amazing. Yeah. For you. Time crisis stuff. being being sort of like, oh yeah, I can't move my character, mm. but I can point a gun at the, an actual gun at the screen and shoot, and so therefore this feels completely revolutionary. I remember. Um the old Rebel Assault games. Yep. Like, they blew me away back in the day. It was FMV, kind of on rails, yeah. shooting. But like, back then, it, it looked like a video and it was just the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. And again, that probably hasn't even aged well. Even though it was real video, just the resolution of it's probably sub 480p. Absolutely. Like, it's terrible. And, and to the point where I think, you know, a lot of people did not like the new Star Fox. Mm. And I think that there can, there can be a lot uh, contributing to that in terms of storytelling and the motion controls and that sort of thing. But also the fact that I think that Star Fox came out of an era where it was on rails because this was the way that we would make Star Fox. It wasn't, oh, this is some cool twist on gameplay. Yeah. And then they've kept that. So by keeping it, it feels like the game is actually being held back by a, by mechanics or by like a lack of hardware that doesn't exist anymore. You can yeah. still we have the hardware to run. That Although sort to of be game. fair, I think the on rail sections of Star Fox are its best. Are actually the best. When it yeah. tries to go into some free roam thing with a little chicken walker in a three D level, you're like, stop doing that. Just go back to the on rail stuff because at least that's kind of a retro throwback. And that it has dated. Mm -hmm. That's why we haven't seen many on rails games recently. Or if yep. we have, like, when's the last great one that came along? Don't know. Don't know. I know Crimson Dragon tried and was terrible. Yeah. Other than that, I can't even think of a recent on rails shooter. So, in terms of games that you're scared about looking back at, mm -hmm. like your favorite games, do yeah. you have do you have a game that sticks in your mind as going? I don't. I, either I think it holds up fantastically, or I don't want to go back. Um, I think surprisingly, even speaking of Star Fox, a lot of the 64 generation stuff, even being early 3D graphics, yeah. actually holds up quite well. Banjo Kazooie. Super yeah, Mario 64, absolutely. again, because they're going for a more stylized kind of art. Form. Really great art styles. Yeah. It still holds up, even though it, you look at it and you go, it's kind of chunky, but it's still cute and adorable in its yeah. own way. In terms of scared, I mean, Halo 1 is probably the game I keep going and playing again and again and again. Did you, did you like the remaster of Halo? Did you think, I mean, you I know, did. There were sections I feel work better. I feel like 
the original art of Halo actually got a bit lost in the th like the new right. one looks better. Yeah, but there were certain artistic choices I think they missed out on, like the silent cartographer level. I think they kind of got a bit wrong. Right. In okay. The original it's like crystal clear skies, it's beautiful, and the new one is like added clouds They're and trying shit. to sex it up and a bit. And it's like, it's like no, it was all clouds away. It was nice. always a sunny day. Yeah, it's a sunny day. Go away. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like gameplay wise, that's gonna hold up well, mm -hmm. and maybe. It's, you know, in a few more generations, I just won't be able to play it. I'll be like, okay, it's too old now. I just have to move on. Yeah. But so far, I keep going back to it. For me, I think, I said Alex Kidd as being one of my favorite games. I still play that quite regularly if I can buy the cables from Chinatown that actually hook up my master system to my mm. plasma television. Um, but then uh, the other big one would be Bioshock. Yeah. Which I feel I need, uh, you know, there's talk of possibly a collection coming out. Yeah. I feel like I have a couple of years maybe even one year, where I can still play that and still be utterly charmed by the graphical look of that game yeah. before it starts feeling as though it doesn't I hold up. I feel Bioshock again is another good one where the artistic style that they've gone with will carry it along. Like the Art Deco art is, is so gorgeous. beautiful. Yeah. The world building they've done is really good. Like the every storytelling is fantastic. Storytelling is fantastic. And like the every, gameplay story every room really you go into has its own little you know, vignette and little story you can kind of see from what's happened. You know, the, the corpses are piled in an interesting way. And yeah. I love that kind of stuff. I feel like that will age pretty well and a yeah. remaster will do, do wonders for it. The question boiled down to are games like wine? And I think that we can say Yes. yes. Sure. Yeah. That as long as there's as long as one of these three things holds up, graphic mm. storytelling or gameplay, I think that you have a reason to go back to a video yeah. game. Yeah, and it can it can age well or it might end up corked and bad. Exactly. <laughs> like corked if, and if Resident Evil. If something's wrong with the recipe, it's not going to work <laughs> yeah, very exactly. well or yeah. something goes wrong in the storage process. If but... it came from a bad uh, wine maker. Yeah. 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 Like whoever made Resident Evil. Look, I'm not saying Resident Evil's a bad <laughs> game. All right, don't hate me, internet. I'm just saying it, it's aged poorly. Yes. Captain Wesker, where's Chris? Stop it. Don't open that door. But Chris is. What is it? Maybe it's Chris. All right, that's it for today's episode of Pocket. Mm -hmm. Is. Let us know in the comments what games hold up really well for you and why. And while you're on the internet, check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nick Boy, at Pierre, at GG, and at Monkey, and at Sam Gee. He's at Gog McGee, and have you tweeted? I, I did tweet some things. You and did some, tweet and some people things. tweeted some things at me. So How did that make you feel? It made me feel wanted and loved. So thank you for tweeting those weird pictures at me. Did, did people actually make weird pictures? They did make I'm weird so pictures. glad. There's one of me in a bathtub. There's, how, how did they get that picture? I don't know. <laughs> There's one of me with a very sexy body, which was accurate, but weird. <laughs> well, continue making Joe feel loved and weird uh, by sending him things at Gog McGee. Uh, today's Thing of the Day graphic was made by Cherry Hart. Thank you very much, Cherry Hart. If you've made a thing, please send it in. And remember that we've got a voting poll in the comments below uh, for the Best Thing of the Day graphic of the year so far. Uh, voting for that closes tomorrow, so make sure if you haven't voted, get your vote in then. And uh, my last request is that I need Ask Pockets for Ask Pocket tomorrow. So Ask Pocket. All right, until tomorrow, Nick Boyer. Go out. That's so nice that people send things. Yeah, there was one which had like the deal with it sunglasses. That was my favorite. Oh, that's a nice, little, nice little gift. Was that with the sexy body? No, no, it was just with me drinking my mug. Can someone put? <sighs> oh, that. <laughs> it was with that. Deal with it. Can someone put the sexy glasses on the sexy body? Sexy body was weird. The weird thing was it was tanned, and I'm redhead, so like the tan yeah, right. is just inappropriate. And also, it's kind of offensive to me. <laughs> and also, it was a woman's body. So those two oh, things combined, a very buff woman's body. <laughs> <laughs>